Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. Multiplying rationals when you're working with monomials and polynomials. Okay, there's a few keys to these problems that students often make mistakes with. The first is that sometimes students don't factor everything. They only factor certain things. You must factor everything first. That's a huge big deal because we can cross out factors on the top and bottom of a fraction if they're the same, but we can't cross out things that are what are called terms, things that are being added or subtracted. Another really common mistake I see students do is that they cross out things and they write down their work in a way that doesn't make sense to them. So I'm going to ask that you guys please, please, please rewrite the problem over and over. It takes up a lot of paper, but I think you can deal. Okay, let's look at this first one. What I want to do is factor everything. So my first fraction, the top, can't factor, but the bottom fraction has a greatest common factor of 5. Okay, second fraction, greatest common factor there of 15, and the bottom M, I can't do anything with that. Okay, everything is now factored. I can cross out factors that are the same on top and bottom, like that M plus 1, that's the same on top and bottom. It's okay that they're in different fractions. I also have a 5 over 5, and I have an M over M. Gee, so all that's left is just that 15. That's it. Um, oftentimes problems ask you for domain restrictions. Domain means numbers that x could not be, or in my case m. Mm -hmm. The values that uh, if m were this value, I'd be dividing by 0. So I want to go back to my original problem and look at the denominators here. What would make those denominators equal to 0? Well, for the first one, if I had 5m plus 5, I'm trying to figure out what would make that thing equal to 0 m would be negative 1. That tells me that that's a domain restriction. m cannot equal to negative 1 in this problem because if it was, I'd be dividing by negative 1. And then the second fraction, I have just plain old m in the bottom. So that tells me my other domain restriction. This is important. Notice how my final answer was just plain old 15. 15 is equal to this original product, right? But I can't just leave my answer as 15 and say m could be any value I want. My original problem tells me my domain restrictions, not the final answer. Let's try another one. Problem number two. Okay, the first fraction I'm going to factor the top using the greatest common factor of x. On the bottom, I notice there's a greatest common factor of 4, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with that trinomial next, but for sure i got to factor out that 4. Okay, so if you look now, that trinomial could be factored even further, and I'm doing something bad here. I'm not rewriting the problem. Plus 4 minus 2. So this is the kind of thing where students get confused. Like imagine you had written that and you're not totally sure what represents what. It might help you to cross out that thing to show you that we rewrote it, but the best thing to do is just to rewrite the entire fraction all over again. So here's what I would recommend. I would recommend starting all over again with that problem when I have that trinomial on the bottom. The first fraction is now 4, x minus 2, x plus 4. Okay, now my first fraction is totally factored. Let's look at the second fraction. It factors to x plus 4, x plus 3 and it's all on top of x plus 8. Okay, we'll cross out entire factors that are the same on top and bottom. It's okay if they're in different fractions. And I think that's it. Yep. So let's see what's left on top. On top I have an x and an x plus 3. On the bottom I have a 4 and an x minus 2. So for many teachers that's enough. You can leave it in that form. Other teachers in textbooks want it back in standard form instead of factored form. It's not a huge deal. It just looks like that. So there's my final answer, but again, let's consider domain restrictions. Domain restrictions are any numbers that make the original denominators equal to zero. So you want to look at the factored form of your original denominators. This first one, remember, factored to 4 parentheses x minus 2 x plus 4. So there were some values that make that denominator equal to zero. And uh, I'm going to draw a little arrow here to show where I'm getting this from. x cannot be equal to 2, because then this part would be 0. And x cannot be equal to negative 4, because that part would be 0. Even though I crossed that out, that's still a domain restriction. And then in my second fraction, I had x plus 8. That told me x could not be equal to negative 8. These were my domain restrictions, the numbers that x is not allowed to be. Let's try one last problem. 4 minus x, 4 plus x, because that's a difference of perfect squares. Factoring everything, of course. My second fraction has a greatest common factor of 3. Uh-oh, I should probably be rewriting that, huh? Okay, so here I go. I'm rewriting everything again because that second fraction had that trinomial, and I want to factor that. 3x minus 4x plus 1. Okay, so I'm going to cross out stuff that's the same in top and bottom. Look at these, x plus 4 and 4 plus x. Because of the commutative property, those are the same thing, so I can cross those out. And then here, look at these guys. 4 minus x and x minus 4. Now those are not the same thing. They 
differ by a factor of negative 1. So what I can do is take one of them and pull out a negative, so it would be negative and then x minus 4. Now that's okay, but what I have to deal with now is that negative 1. So those guys canceled out. And then I have 3 over 9, that becomes 3 down here. Okay, I've made a huge mess of this. Again, this is where students make mistakes and teachers make mistakes when they don't organize their work very well. But I know on top I have a negative, an x plus 1. On the bottom I have a 3x squared. So here's my final answer, negative x minus 1 over 3x squared. Don't forget domain restrictions. Looking at my original denominators up here, I would say x cannot be equal to 0 or negative 4. So please factor everything. That's the key to these. Organize your work and factor everything as you go. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. Work it. Work it. So if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> that should be less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>